been meaning to make this video for a while. I didn't really know how to put it together or if I really wanted to put myself out there, but I feel like this topic is just too important to sit on. So if you're over 40, still on the fence about using AI, this one's for you. Let's rip the bandaid off, okay? If you're in your 40s or 50s, late 30s, whatever, and you're still avoiding AI, you're putting yourself at a serious disadvantage. This isn't fear mongering, it's not clickbait, it's just math. The tech is not slowing down. In your career, your business, your relevance, they really depend on whether you choose to adapt or set this one out. Now I get it, AI is very overwhelming. Every headline makes it seem like all of our jobs are just gonna fan it. Or it seems like you need a computer science degree to even to get started, right? There's a new app, a new tool, a new model, a new company, every three days. It's a lot. So what does it seem like most people our age do? They freeze, they avoid, or they say, I'm not a tech person. This is just a trend. This is for the kids. Well, here's the truth. You don't need to be a tech person. It's not going anywhere. All you need is to be curious. Now let's talk about the real unlock. It's not the tool, it's your mindset. Now, using AI isn't about learning a new tool. It's about learning a new way of thinking. Now, before you browse to a website or open a new app, you gotta shift your approach. And yes, it takes a little bit of adjustment, but you've done much harder things. Most of us were trained to be task doers, but the AI era, it rewards people who think like managers. Now, whether you're a CEO, a plumber, or a stay-at-home parent, you're now in charge of directing AI agents. Well, if not now, then very soon. Now, here's a quick side note. What is an AI agent, okay? Think of it like this. The chatbot you talk to, whether it's Claude, Gemini, ChatGPT, whatever, that's the brain. They have all the information, but they can't do a lot with it. Now, the agents, that's the body. That's the arms and legs that can reach out and use tools. They can read your email, schedule appointments, search the web, even make phone calls. You give the instructions and they handle the grunt work. Actually, if you've been using ChatGPT recently, you've already kind of using an AI agent because it can browse the web, create images, run code, and more. You may have not realized it was an AI agent with all the buzzwords floating around, but it really is. So now you've got a brain and a body ready to follow your lead but only if you know how to break things down into steps and give clear, structured instructions. Now that's the skill no one's teaching. Sure, there are people throwing this prompt engineer crap around, but you have to think in step-by-step -step mentally, and that's the one skill that's gonna make or break your success with AI. Let me show you real quick what that looks like in action, okay? Here's the ChatGPT app. I'm gonna ask it to help me write an email but I'm not just saying write a good email. Watch how I got it, step by step. I need a warm, professional follow-up email to a potential client I met yesterday. Keep it short. Add one line about our shared interest in hot dogs. Now, boom. That's prompting with the manager mindset. It's a clear task, clear context, clear tone. And yeah, there's a mobile app too. It syncs across all your devices, memorizes all your old conversations. You can chat with it while walking the dog. You can even share images or live video as input. And we'll get to that on another video soon. But really quick while we're talking about the app, really quick while we're talking about the app, the more information you can give ChatGPT, the better answers you're gonna get, right? So garbage in equals garbage out. So you wanna provide it with as much context as possible. If you hired a new assistant, you're not just gonna say, do this for me. You're gonna say, hey, this is a project we're working on. Let me give you all these details. Let's do this, this, and this. Then you give it the task, right? So on the app, you'll notice, we can get a focus here. The little microphone, that guy right there, not the circle, but the microphone. Hit that microphone. It's also on your desktop. You'll probably have to allow microphone use in your browser or something like that. Hit the microphone and just start talking. You can talk for two minutes. Give as much information as you can because it's very valuable to get better results. So as soon as you get done, hit the microphone again, hit enter to submit everything you've just said, and bam, you'll get much, much better results. And no typing. Just know this isn't a novelty, this is a new digital enhancement. Here are three easy ways to dip your toes in this week. Number one, 
email rewrites. Paste in a message and ask it to make this clearer and more confident. Number two, brainstorming. Need name ideas for a project or a gift list? Ask for five, then ask for it to improve them. Honestly, it's already replaced my Google search for stuff like dinner ideas, birthday planning ideas, stuff like that. Number three, meeting prep. Say, I've got a call with a new vendor or client tomorrow. What should I ask them? Now here's the real secret bonus that nobody's talking about. You finally get to ask the dumb questions. The ones you're always too embarrassed to ask your friends or boss about. Ones you didn't want to Google in front of your kids. Stuff you always wanted to know, wishing someone to answer you without any kind of judgment. These AI tools will never roll their eyes at you and they're never going to sigh unless you instruct them to. That's not just helpful, that's empowering. And you're not coding, right? You're just communicating with a little bit more structure. Now, before you go pasting your entire life into ChatGPT, let's talk about a few things to look out for. This is very powerful technology, but remember, it's still software. Just like with email or cloud storage, security and privacy matter. Here are two quick rules. Don't paste in sensitive information. No bank statements, no tax records, no patient records, no client contracts. Now, some tools let you connect your Google Drive or Dropbox so the AI can search and summarize your files. That's really cool, but remember, they can see everything that's in, in all of your Google Drive, all of your Dropbox, everything that people have shared with you even. So remember, anything you connect, you're handing over. So be very intentional with your data. Number two, know the limits. These tools sound confident even when they're wrong. That's called hallucinations, and we can talk about that later. But don't outsource your brain. Use AI to assist you, not to just be an autopilot. The goal isn't to trust AI blindly, it's to collaborate with it intentionally. Now, here's what's not coming back. The old way of doing business. Endless memos, manual research, long email threads and back and forths, AI is already replacing the grunt work. Now, it's not replacing you, it's replacing the busy work. So you can focus on things you actually enjoy, things that matter. If you ignore this shift, someone else is gonna eat your lunch. If you lean into it, you become the one who's irreplaceable. Okay, here's your challenge. Pick one AI tool this week, ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, Perplexity, whatever. I'd recommend starting with ChatGPT since it's the one that's most widely used, but if your company leans toward Google or Microsoft, uh, Gemini and Copilot are great and solid options too. Just pick one and go, give it a shot. Try one small task, rewrite a note, prep for a call, brainstorm with it, ask it a dumb question, and then try to break it into steps. Treat it like an assistant, but guide it like a professional. That's how you build the muscle. And you don't have to master this overnight, right? But if you don't start now, when will you? You're not too old. You're too valuable to sit this one out. You can do this.